So here are uh, some strong nuclear files. Uh, you have, um, let's see, HO minus, RO minus, HS minus. Uh, I minus BR and uh, minus rather and uh, <clears throat> what do you see in, in common? Well, they have a uh, negative charge. Yeah, nuclear files are a source of electrons or electron rich, right? And um, let's go to weak nuclear files, which are going to be, um, well, chlorine might be fair, fair to weak. And um, let's see, F minus. H2O, ROH. <clears throat> These guys probably no surprise because they don't have a charge on them, right? These guys don't have a charge. What's going to happen is um, uh, they are electron rich because of their lone pairs, and those will act as the nucleophile. However, they're not going to be as strong because they don't have an all-out negative charge although they still have uh, some electrons. Same thing with ROH. You have something like this. Of course, you have lone pairs, electrons, which can, um, which can be a source of uh, electrons so that this molecule behaves as a nucleophile going towards the electrophile. So these guys have charges on them. Why is it that they uh, are weak nucleophiles? <clears throat> and chlorine again can be a uh, fair tweak depending on uh, your textbook um, but well it has something to do with um, polarizability meaning that for something to be a strong nucleophile it has to possess uh, the ability to kind of uh, throw its uh, its electron, um, or actually, throw its electrons to make a new bond onto the electrophile. So, in order for it to be able to do that, it has to be kind of big. So, let's take something like iodine. Iodine, we have a negative charge, and if it's approaching something like a um, something like a, uh, I don't know, uh, an electrophile. Uh, let's say you have carbon, and um, Say the carbon is attached to uh, another carbon. So CH3. Say this is CH3. CH3. Okay. So you have a tertiary substrate, and um, you know this favors SN1. Now, in order uh, for the nucleophile to kind of throw its, to kind of be able to throw its um, negativity or uh, I should say uh, its electron density towards the electrophile uh, it needs to be able to uh, be polarized in other words what you have here is something that looks like this where the electron density actually completely shifts to one side of the atom so that this side is now lots of these little negatives which makes up the um, large I guess uh, negativity for lack of a better word a large amount of negativity let's show these these little negatives in and um, now the other side is now a little bit positive to balance it out it's a little bit positive so because now you have one side negative one side positive 
you see it's polarized. Polar just means like polar opposites, like north and south pole in this case. Uh, a negative charge to one side of the iodine and a positive on the other. If the atom is not big enough, it can't polarize. So it won't have any polarizability. And um, that's why fluorine is a very uh, poor nucleophile because it's too tiny. There's not enough room for this guy to be able to kind of, uh, again, shift all of its uh, negative electron cloud to one side of the atom. Um, so, so these larger uh, atoms are, are able to polarize and they make much better nucleophiles. And this is also the reason why nucleophilicity is going to increase as you go down the periodic table in the uh, halogen column. Okay. Uh, these halogens have uh, that negative charge, uh, which wants to, um, you know, kind of uh, react with uh, the electron uh, poor electrophile. But, but again, because of polarizability, um, nucleophilicity will increase as you go down because these, these uh, atoms get larger. These elements are, have more uh, higher atomic number and obviously um, are going to be, uh, have a larger atomic uh, radii. So that's why uh, these are good nucleophiles. Lorene definitely isn't. Chlorine kind of weak to fair. It's a little bit larger than uh, chlorine's a little bit larger than fluorine. And again, anything with a negative charge is electron rich, so that makes a pretty good nucleophile. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, lone pairs can also um, behave as a, or, or uh, cause a molecule to behave as a nucleophile because uh, they are a source of electrons. Um, whenever something has a charge on it, it's more reactive. So, um, like anything else in chemistry, uh, it kind of wants to be neutralized, wants to be calm. All, all molecules kind of want to be calm, cool, and collected all the time. So, if it has a charge on it, it's going to be more reactive. But um, since these guys over here don't have a charge, uh, they're neutral, so it's going to make them weaker uh, nucleophiles. Um, but nucleophiles nonetheless, because again, of these lone pairs. So it's also the reason why weak nucleophiles favor um, favor SN1 reactions because, as you know, in an SN1, I'll just redraw this uh, picture here. As we know, in SN1, positive charge is already there, so a lot of the work is already done for the reaction, right? Positive charge is already there, so all this guy has to do is kind of say, okay, well, um, there's an electrophile stable positive charge hanging around those so this can kind of mosey on in and uh, react where if you have a let's say primary uh, substrate right something like methane well this is a neutral molecule so the uh, nucleophile coming in has to has to do a little bit more work to kind of push out the leaving group. So in this case, if it's hydrogen, or maybe I should have, should have drawn it a better leaving group, like, uh, I don't know, let's say, have a strong nucleophile coming in, backside attack, because of the steric engines from this large uh, atom here, along with its uh, along with its lone pairs, right? So there's no room to really have the strong nucleophile to come in this side. So it's going to come in backside attack. And uh, yeah, again, because of that negative charge, it's going to be more reactive, give it a, the nucleophile a little bit more oomph to come in on the backside and then push this guy out. Right? Where before, if a positive charge is already there, then uh, the, the weak nucleophile can kind of come in uh, w without really having to, um, without really having to push out anything, right? So um, doesn't really have to be as strong as, of course, this scenario here, which is uh, sn two. This be example of tertiary substrate. 
SN1, which uh, is described a little bit further in another video. So that's strong, weak nucleophiles determined by, again, the um, whether or not it has a charge on it, uh, negative charge, electron rich, and uh, polarizability, how large the, uh, the atom is.